Hey everyone, welcome to episode 55 of Pixel Feed Radio. And I'm with my friend John Wong here. Did I pronounce that right? I think I did. It's John Wong. Close. Oh, close. <laughs> close enough. Um, and John, he uh he's he actually owns a company, uh local uh, local SEO search out in Canada. He specializes on SEO, so I'm really excited to talk to him. Um, they do a lot a lot of local SEO as well, and they actually have an initiative uh to give back to the community. So I want to talk to that as well. And the reason why I'm so excited to talk about SEO is because a lot of the the big companies that I deal with now, and even when I started with small businesses doing uh, media for uh, small businesses, they just kind of forget about lo about content and, and local SEO. And I'm like, no, man, you still got to do that. I mean, if you do it backwards, meaning take care of your organic first and then sprinkle some paid ads on top of it, then you set it on fire. But people don't think that way anymore. They just want to go straight to the ads. And listen, I'm guilty of it too, because sometimes I'll throw up a funnel and just run mad traffic, but I know what I'm doing. Most small businesses don't. That's the reality of it. Um, so let's talk about your background, man. Have you always been an entrepreneur? I, I know you're an immigrant. I'm an immigrant as well, not from Vietnam, but you know, let's let's hear your story, man, because we're we're hard workers, right? <laughs> well, uh, I'll just go way back. Uh, thanks for the intro, by the way, Christian. Sure. Um, so I I was a forced child of an immigrant family from Vietnam. They left the war. Um, we settled in uh, in a city outside of Toronto, Canada, um, and really just growing up. Um, you know, just survival, right? I uh, didn't know the language. My parents uh, just took odd jobs. They were on social assistance and raised four kids, right? But the one thing that really resonated with me was uh, they made it a fact and a point to always have dinner together um, and always have shelter and food, right? So yeah. bare necessities. But that's what we all knew growing up, right? We're there for each other. We only knew each other and we basically took care of of the most important thing, which is family, right? Relationship. Um, so growing up, that's what I kind of knew. And I had a lot of jobs growing up, um, really not just for my own purpose, but to help the family out, right? Um, and first job was newspaper boy, you know, take care yeah. and buy some groceries and milk and, you know, the, the necessity stuff. Um, and then fast forward until I went and got my first uh, job. So I studied business finance and then I, I got my first job in advertising sales, uh, traditional media. And I also dabbled into online affiliate uh, marketing performance based and I was a buyer. So uh, a lot of the, the people that wanted to acquire new customers, they would just reach out to us as a performance online marketing company. Um, so I learned a lot about the digital space from, you know, ads to email to um, co-reg to you name it, right? Um, so it was a lot of fun. Um, but I, what really resonated me, with me was um, I worked at Yellow Pages and I was there for five years and it allowed me to really figure out where I wanted to take my career because I, I connected with a lot of small, medium-sized business owners. So during the affiliate world, I was actually working with a lot of Fortune 500 larger organizations that all they care about was acquiring new customers and they didn't care where it came from, right? Affiliates or um, any, any kind of funnel, whatever, it doesn't matter. With business owners, what really resonated with me was they were my neighbors, they were my community leaders, they were friends and family and just local people that ra really mattered, right? They're, they took care of real people. and. What, what connected me more to these yellow pages kind of business owners were um, they, they wanted to help just the average person, right? They didn't right. care so much about like making 10 X or way more millions of dollars. They just wanted to make enough to survive for their family and community and helping bringing value to the people that really mattered. Right. Um, so that really resonated with me. And, Fast forward five years after that was when I started my own agency where at Yellow Pages, they basically told me up front that they were getting less return on investment, spending more than ever, and user behavior has shifted away from traditional and Yellow Pages platforms to more Google platforms, right? Um, so that's where I kind of started. I didn't know anything about SEO. To be honest, I was a sales rep. 
I was just good at meeting. Hey, customers. we all got to start somewhere, man. I didn't know anything about Facebook ads when I started either. And look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. But there's a need, there's a demand and yeah. people requested it. And I filled that gap and I got some new clients. I went out there, figure out how to serve them, uh, got some good uh, results for them. And that's how I started expanding, growing my agency. That's a pretty awesome story, man. So you, you, do, you dove right in. That's a good transition. And that's why it makes sense that you went with SEO because you were dealing with yellow pages. I mean, I remember my, my first quote unquote real business at 23, you know, that's, that was the main thing for us, the yellow pages. I mean, Google was around, but it wasn't, it was just starting to become popular, I guess. So, you know, you weren't thinking about, you know, I was one of those small businesses that didn't know any better and didn't start, you know, really uh, taking advantage of digital which like i look back now i'm like oh what an idiot am i you know it's like oh, i should have known i wish i would have known but and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people think like that you know from back then um so how did you learn seo how was the trend <laughs> yeah that's the question like how did you because seo is not easy man i mean you can create if you create content now you know google is pretty good about you know indexing depending on the content and the quality of the content but back then it was all about backlinks and how to cheat the system and it's all, all the stuff. same it's the it same hasn't changed it hasn't changed people are gonna <laughs> people are gonna try to fast track things hack the system right like you right. mentioned and it's just like anything right bait and switch running a business that doesn't have core foundational values, people will see right through you and know that you're trying to cheat the system, right? So if you're trying to portray like a real business, think about like, I, I look at my yellow pages type clients, okay? Digital didn't even exist. Think about back in the day, 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, okay? Traditional media existed. And all it was was radio, television, print media, trade shows, you know, just door knockers, just whatever it was, signage, creative. That was it, right? But what was the biggest core thing that mattered to them? They took care of their customers. They had offered a, a product or service that people wanted. They were willing to pay for. They knew what the competitors were doing. They knew what differentiated themselves. They to provide great customer service they knew exactly how to run a really good tight-knit operation fast forward now and even five ten years ago google started taking off understanding the users where they consume information what kind of content do they ex uh, expect today where do they consume content what in the content do they want to absorb? Is it informational? Is it transactional? Is it navigational? There's so much involved today, but it's pretty much the same thing. People expect good type of businesses when you're starting to promote them, promote a product or service. If there is something like a lead magnet or something that's a call to action, get them to click to a, a funnel or you get them to call or fill out a form, it's expected that you take care of that lead. You call them properly. You know exactly what your product and service is. You know how to price it. Like you need to run a good business. If you don't do that, no matter how good your SEO is, no matter how good your ads are, you're not going to be successful, right? Yeah, because it's very short minded. Yeah, I don't do uh, I don't touch Legion anymore unless it's like a, a, a an exception here and there from a friend that I know or you know what I mean? Like and when I say a friend, like a colleague, you know what I mean? That come on, do do it for me, please. And, you know, we're friends or something or like, you know, can you guys white level it for me? I was like, all right, I'll white level it for you because you're my boy and you understand the, you understand how this works. But that was my biggest issue uh, when I dealt with small businesses and uh, we did a lot of Legion before I set up. Because the reason why I like doing lead gen, because as a media buyer, it's so easy. It's like one of the easiest, when you come from an e-com background with Facebook ads, running lead, I can run lead gen with my eyes closed. It's like, I, I mean, it's basically the campaign takes care of itself if you set it up uh, automatically. So at the end of the month, it's pretty much free money, right? But the biggest problem that I had with uh, small business clients is that one, they wouldn't follow up with the leads. Two, they wouldn't listen to me when it came to the funnel because they wanted to cheap out on the funnel. I'm like, no, 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 no. The harder you make it for them to opt in, the better the lead is. So 
you put a wall asking with their email to unlock that content. Then that's a 20 minute BSL where you sell them on whatever it is that you're selling. Then you pre-qualify them with questions and then you put them on a calendar where they have to opt in. And then you send like a freaking 14 day back in email. to do it but people want to cheap out and just be like oh let's just do a lead magnet what's your phone number and name and then they expect that everybody's going to get back to them i can't tell you how many people will they're not going to pick up the phone they're not they even forget that they even opted in like it's crazy to me that people opt in and funnels and they're like oh i don't remember so uh you know uh what do you call it buyers are liars so 85 percent of them are just lying to you they know they did it they just don't want to you know they don't want to talk to you and they don't want to deal with it so that's why it's so important to pre-qualify as much as you can and if you're doing SEO on top of it, organic content, if you're building that brand awareness and they know who you are before you put that lead magnet in front of them with the power with the power of SEO, then your show up rate is going to go through the roof and your closing rate is going to go through the roof, correct? And and I, I totally agree where you're going because it's all about pre-qualifying, right? And yeah. adding them with as many queries and forms as possible because small business owners, they don't understand marketing. They don't even understand sales most of the time. Yeah. And therefore they don't really understand the user's behavior when it comes to social, right? They feel like they want to see themselves still in traditional media in that flyer, that magazine, but they don't understand how Facebook works or how Google works and how digital really works. Right. Although they use it all the time, they don't understand what the users who are actively looking for the product and service has to go through, right? So it's more about the educational piece, I find, yeah. with the small, medium-sized business owners. But um, when you do have good ones, they're great, right? Oh, it's a great feeling, especially if, you're, if, if they're successful. It's like they're so thankful, you know, because you help them grow their business. And that's like the best feeling for me. But unfortunately, when I was doing it, and, you know, I wanted to do it to help people too. But what happened was like 90% of them didn't follow up with the leads. They didn't listen to me. And I was like, you know what? It's why am I putting all this energy and caring so much about these small businesses that they don't care themselves? And now like that the pandemic hit, now they really care, right? <laughs> you know? Uh, so I've done some um, community, quote unquote, community service, you know, help some people for free just because of everything that's going in educational, in an educational way because, you know, you want to help your local community. But let's um let's move on to um so if you're a small business and they're, they're trying to get started and they can't afford to hire you or hire somebody like me what's the first thing that they have to do in order to start showing up somewhere in search engines or google or anything like that what do they have to do to make sure that at least there's the minimal chance that they will show up at least in a local search yeah. So um, first off, own all your asset pieces, go get yourself a website, make sure there's content that portrays the product and service you're offering. Speak to the audience members, pretty straightforward stuff in terms of building a landing page. Um, make sure you're not just selling your product and service, but speak and answer questions that your, your ideal customers are wanting to absorb and look, seek out. Right. Um, so keyword research is very important, um, but owning asset, meaning build your own website, own that domain name, make sure your brand is consistent across all social channels and directories and profile accounts. Right. So create accounts, make sure it's free um, and it's time consuming, but it makes sense. So make sure your name, address, postal code, phone number is consistent across the board um, and your website's you know, yes, it's a no follow backlink, but it's all about Google recognizing that you're more established than just having a website because your brand is more established. One thing that I do want to emphasize is if you're a local small medium sized business, go get your Google My Business page verified and claimed because that allows you to be on the Google three pack has an opportunity to then when people are seeking out not just your category or keywords um, or services that you offer, you may appear on the map because more people than ever are searching on mobile. And that's the first thing that appears on mobile. It takes up a lot of the real estate and you wanna just at least start getting some exposure, become more visible, update with images, get some reviews, uh, post it on a regular basis. Just start being active on digital because a lot of business owners, they forget or they don't want to so either hire someone, get someone in-house to do it, freelancers, there's a lot of options out there, 
but marketing is should be the focal point of any business, right? Because you don't know where your next customer is going to come from. But if you're out there just being coming more visible and active, it allows you to have more opportunities to to get good quality leads. Yeah, I would say sales first, marketing second, and then the rest will fall into place because if you don't have a sales, you don't have revenue. Without that revenue, you can't afford marketing. So, you know, you can do organic, but let's face it, organic, again, organic is good. You should be doing organic all times, but you should always do some type of paid, even if it's $5 a day, brand awareness, some, you know, Google, Facebook, whatever, you know what I mean? Be where your community's at too. Uh, a lot of people don't realize where their communities are hanging out. So that's another thing. Write article, write guest articles uh, for, I don't know, publications, blogs, or whatever that are related to your niche. That will help you show up and uh, local SEO stuff, I'm assuming. Um, so let's talk about the, the initiative that, uh, that you started uh, to give back to the community. Uh, you started it just now, 2020, right? Yeah, so uh, last couple of years, we were giving back by uh, giving backpacks full of school supplies um, to underprivileged, new to Canada children that um, aren't, you know, equipped for the, the school year, right? So filled with all the school supplies. Um, and I did that for a couple of years, gave a couple hundred backpacks, etc. And this year, because schools weren't accepting anything this year because of the pandemic, um, I shifted my focus to more small, medium sized businesses. Uh, the reason is, as you know, they've been hit the hardest, especially storefront, um, high I, I guess real estate type locations because rent is so high, less people are traveling and going to work nowadays. A lot of it is home based now. And um, I wanted to make a difference. I just wanted to help those people more so. So what we've planned on doing, and it started in October, we actually um, started a campaign already to help one uh, lucky business owner out. Um, but it's really just to get them started with SEO. So we, we've, over the next five years, we're going to uh, take on 100 new small, medium sized business customers, um, but give, offer one year free SEO campaigns for each of them. Um, so hopefully that makes a difference. And that's because we're here to really support the local community um, and help the small, medium sized businesses uh, achieve, you know, take care of their own base, right? Take care of their community because a lot of them don't understand what we understand as digital marketers. Um, and this may make a big difference in their lives, right? And that's all I can do, which is control what you can control and contribute where you can. And um, that's a little thing that we're kind of doing as a company here. So, okay. So when you're working with like paid clients or when you're working with one of those small businesses that you're helping out, what is the process like? So I'm a small business. I'm just starting out. I have no online presence besides some crappy website that looks from like 1999. I come to you and I'm John, help me out. What, what do we need to do? So what's the process that you take, the steps that you take from beginning to whatever you want to take them? What's the process that you follow to get them going? Yeah, so there's a vetting process um, in, to ensure that they're a good fit for us, right? right? So I've been doing this for seven years. At the beginning, I was taking on every single client, not knowing who is my ideal type of client. But today, it's a lot different because I know um, either industry or what kind of niche they are in, who their major competitors are. Uh, we, we vet. We find out, like, where have they advertised? What was the success? Why do you need to work on SEO, what is the main reason you're reaching out to me in the first place, right? Um, so once you uncover all those uh, nuggets, then you want to ensure that they're going to be a good client, right? So right. they have to portray like good values or, you know, things that really matter to me and my organization and my staff, right? Which is really do good, make sure that you're trying to make an impact, make sure you actually care about your customer, run a real tight knit operation, all these foundational things that I would talk about. Um, and then from there, it's more, are you a good fit, right? And it's more gut than anything because we say no to a lot of people, yeah. but ultimately it's more about making sure they're going to be in alignment with you as an organization um, and help as many people as possible. And it's okay to say no, right? Because it's better to say no than say yes. And then 
they're not going to be like it's a lot of time right like the, the in bot onboarding process is pretty time consuming so you right. want to make sure that you guys are all in alignment and that's where we rather uh, focus on the prospecting and ensure they're vetted properly before taking on any client. That's really cool. So, okay. So once you bet them and they're a good fit and all that good stuff, what's the first thing that, what's the first thing that you look at under the hood to try to improve, to, to get their businesses, like start showing up on the ranks and all that good stuff. Like what's the process? Yeah. With SEO, um, there's over 200 signals, right? So right. we look at the website, we look at, um, there are errors. We look at com competition. We do keyword research, content optimization, link profile, social engagement, reputation management. We have a full house in-house team of all of it. And this is what, that's the challenge, right? Because to educate a consumer or business owner on anything that we do is overwhelming for them. Yeah. So we kind of make it simple for them to ensure that ultimately you're becoming more visible on search. We're trying to position you as an expert and there's a lot of things. There's a lot of departments that need to go hand in hand, but that's why we do what we do, right? We, it's a challenge for us, but it's fun. So all my team members are really focused on their designated tasks, right? As SEOs, as strategists, to developers, to graphics, to link builders, all of us are in alignment and we collaborate, right? So there's not just one thing, it's a whole year's worth of things uh, based on where they're at at that time, if right. that makes sense. So is it still possible? Well, I mean, I guess local, it's a little bit easier, but is it still possible to compete against like one of the behemoths uh, as far as like showing up in the rankings on the first page? Is that still even a possibility at some point? Or it's yeah, more you have to be realistic, age? right? Yeah, no, that's what I realistic. Yeah. Be realistic about yeah. who your major competitors are, who, what you want to be known and what is the product or service that you're trying to compete as, right? Like what, what's your expertise? So if you're competing with like the Amazons and any of the big retailers, good luck, right? Go yeah. be on their platform. But if you are like a dentist, for instance, a plumber, right? Um, yes, it's a localized, but there's hyper competitiveness, right? Like as a dentist, there could be hundreds, if not thousands of dentists in your local area, but they've been doing SEO for five, 10, 20 years before you even started. So right. be realistic. You need yeah. to understand that you're starting off just like a new business. It takes time to establish yourself. So that's why we are realists. <laughs> we let people know, like, if you are a client, don't expect this right off the bat. If that's what your thoughts are, like, just be real with SEO, right? People I have a, <laughs> I have a saying that my whole team like laughs about all the time because I go in there. It's like, I, sh I shatter my clients dreams before I make them come true <laughs> because I want to set the expectations. You know, it's like, it's not overnight, man. It's unless you have a, a well-established brand that's been around for a while and it's known organically and you have a following and now for some reason you waited up until now to run ads, absolutely. You're going to be an overnight success when I hope, when I take over those ads. But if you're a brand that you just, just literally launched three months ago, which at this point I, I won't even take on unless that they're super proven, you know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes a little bit of time, you know, time and money. It's not something people have this, this idea nowadays that everything needs to happen overnight. And that's not how it works. You know, it's like people I talk to, like from the, you know, that know me from the YouTube channel or whatever, or, or clients, you know, they, they're like, Oh my God. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this for over a decade. I mean, and I'm obsessed with it. This is what I live, breathe and sleep on all day long like that's why i know what i know but let's go talk back you know when i started i was just like i, I didn't know anything you know what i mean it's like going it's like before going to school right <laughs> so and that's the biggest challenge right people yes they're good at their business but they they don't know the digital landscape so you have to like benchmark it and you got to let them set it straight to them right like just yeah. Be real and hopefully they respect you more so when you're real because if, I've if actually, they still add, I've actually yeah. been told uh, in meetings that the, the reason why we seek out and, and talk to you and after like the couple of people that we talked to is because you were the only one that was like straight up, <laughs> you know, it's like no bullshit. I was like, yeah, there's no point because why am I going to feed you 
some dream when I know for a fact it's going to be hard work. And why am I going to set unrealistic expectations from the beginning? I'd rather give you the real deal from the beginning. That way you know what's coming and what's going to happen. And I don't understand why most people don't do that. <laughs> I just don't get it, you know? It's because when you're starting off, you'll say and do anything to get, that client. To get the client. And yeah. it's tough, right? Like if, if you want to, and this is the, the challenge, right? When you're starting off, and it was my way as well. Like I was out there hustling and saying yes to everyone. Right. Yeah. But I didn't know who my ideal customer is. Right. right. So yes, I got them to rank, but then they left me and they were like, okay, I already used you. And I'm like, really? Like I worked a, a lot to get that <laughs> yeah. um, good ranking yet. I was like, okay, maybe that's not my type of profile client, that ideal customer, right? And then you just refine it and learn and you make mistakes and you learn. But as a business owner, it takes time to even know how to run a business, take care of customers, ask yeah. the right questions, take care of your staff. Like all this, like you've been doing it for 10 years, I've been doing it for seven. And like, if you've been in it for three to five years, that's a good time to really understand how to run a business right but before that you're still learning right yeah. and a lot of people might be doing a lot of side hustle freelancing right now and then they're gonna do it on you know take it full on but unless you're full on for three years or five years you don't really grasp what you need to grasp right if that makes sense no and the other thing um i tell people it's like being an entrepreneur a business owner it's like waking up and putting out fires on a daily basis because nothing ever goes up as planned. I mean, it's like any percent of the time, nothing goes as planned, but uh, listen, John, thank you. So man, the, the time flew by John. Thank you so much for coming on, man. So I know you're in Canada, but if, if people want to find you, if they, if they, they want, uh, you know, help with their businesses with SEO, where can they find you? Yeah, so they can check out my website. It's www.localseosearch ca um we also have a podcast as well uh it's yep. called local seo today and for us it's really just to provide insight information i worked at yellow pages for five years my vp of sales was there for over 30 years so we provide a lot of tangible tips and tricks from real business owners that we've actually met in person uh, so we've probably worked with over fifteen thousand plus businesses over the last couple of, you know decades yeah um so it's a lot of insight right and that's what people want today real life experience so that's what we provide that's awesome man everybody if you're listening right now or watching on youtube make sure make sure to check out his podcast if you need seo service i'm sure you can service anybody in the world right not just canada exactly. right yeah so yeah, if you need seo check him out and uh if you're on youtube make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. If you're in the podcast, make sure you subscribe. And John, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. Talk to you later.